All right, in this video, I'm going over a microeconomic model of recycling, and this is actually a public goods problem, so we're gonna have a drop in the bucket problem as part of this, and I'm gonna show you how that looks in a microeconomic model. It has to do with elasticities, and along the way, we're gonna think about some of the features of this model that are interesting, and how the government can think about changing things when we have a problem that looks like this. So. Okay, here's the model. The model is gonna have as the choice variable the percent of your waste that you recycle. And the benefit to that is going to be the quality of the environment. So by recycling, um, you think you would make a, a positive contribution to the environment. Now I'm gonna move on, but I'd like you to think a little bit in the meantime about this elasticity and the magnitude of this elasticity. Um, now the cost here is going to be some sort of effort cost. The fact that it's effortful to recycle is annoying. I'm going to call it a hassle cost since we've already used E for environment. And this cost here is going to have a classic increasing marginal cost shape. So let me draw that. All right, the reason our hassle function has this increasing marginal cost shape is because you're gonna recycle the easiest things to recycle first, your cans, your, your aluminum cans, your um, papers, everything that you can just throw in the recycling bin, you're gonna recycle that first, and so the, these, the first 10 or 20% of your trash that you recycle is going to be fairly easy, low marginal cost. After you've recycled everything that's easy, you have to start recycling things like peanut butter jars where you have to soak it overnight and clean it and it's a lot more effortful, in which case the effort cost or the hassle cost goes up and after you've recycled everything that sort of has the little recycling um, triangle thing on it, you're going to have to move on to actually reducing the amount of trash that you put out, which requires a lot of thinking carefully about what kinds of products you buy, and so that's even more effortful. So the fact that you're gonna recycle the easiest things first, and as you increase the percentage of your trash you recycle, you move on to more and more difficult things to recycle, is gonna give this the classic increasing marginal cost shape. Now, let's return to this elasticity here, and you might have noticed that this elasticity is close to zero. So this is how you write that in calculus. The change in the quality of the environment with respect to the percentage of trash that you personally recycle, that elasticity is very, very low. You have almost no effect on the collective environment. What has a big effect is what percentage of the population is engaging in, um, in, in recycling. That, that could have a big effect, but that's collective. That's not about your individual effort. And this low elasticity is indicative of the drop in the bucket problem. The fact that um, anything you can do for the cause is going to be such a small share of the cause that it doesn't really make a difference. In which case, um, if someone realizes this elasticity is low, then they may have no incentive to actually participate in the efforts to recycle. So how does the government solve this problem? Well, um, there's a couple of different approaches you can take, and one of them is going to be to um, let recycling be sort of part of your identity or something that you do it because of the social value rather than because your personal recycling has an effect on the environment, in which case you'd have to add a social utility um, term to this objective function. And I've been, of course, pretty vague about what the nature of that social utility is. It could be your friends see you recycling and they notice and they think you're a better person because of it, um, which is impure altruism. It could be uh, self-esteem utility, something like diagnostic utility, where by recycling that diagnoses you as a good person who's making a positive impact on the world, but it's some factor that has to do with your identity or the way you view, your, view yourself and or the way others view you and that's going to have a pretty strong relationship with how much you recycle and so this elasticity is going to be high in magnitude. So that's just me writing out in calculus language um, the fact that this elasticity is fairly high in magnitude. 
And of course that depends on your social environment. In some social environments, nobody cares about recycling, nobody's thinking about it, so maybe there's an importance weight on this term that's close to zero. But in other communities, this matters a lot, and of course you can have campaigns or, or social movements that try to create higher weight on a social part of your utility function when it comes to recycling. So this is one way of affecting people's recycling behavior that's not, that doesn't rely on them believing something that's false, which is that their recycling behavior has an effect on the environment. Now the other thing people can do is look at the effort costs, or the government, that means, that, that is, can do is look at the effort costs, and the government can say, people are pretty sensitive to effort costs, so if we could somehow rotate this effort function down or make it easier to recycle, that's going to increase people's recycling behavior. And um, that might be, for example, um, increasing the number of recycling receptacles in a city or um, increasing the number of things that the recycling uh, center in that city will accept, things like that. And that can be built into the model as an exogenous variable, for example, I changed that to F for city recycling facilities, where that's an exogenous variable that's going to rotate that effort function down, which is going to increase people's recycling behavior. So this is just a classic example of a drop in the bucket problem, where drop in the bucket has to do with the elasticity being close to zero for an individual, even though the elasticity with respect to the whole group is large. And the government just has to think about creative ways of solving a public goods problem like this one.